How's it going guys? So today we're going to be making some upgrades to the Boyd's Forest Dragon enclosure. And that is because if we look over here, I've got a bunch of new plants. So these are the plants I've been waiting on to put in there. And they're hopefully going to fill up the enclosure really well. Make it look nice and dense and rainforesty in there. But yeah, shout out to one of the viewers who watches the show, uh, Paul, who hooked me up with these plants. Thanks so much, mate. Hopefully I can put them to good use and keep them all alive. I really, really appreciate it. The boys should hopefully love it. So yeah, let's get set up. So let me take you guys through the process of planting out an enclosure. So when deciding to put live plants in a reptile enclosure, it's obviously important to make sure that the plants are going to be safe for the reptiles. I'm pretty lucky in the case here of these forest dragons because these guys are pretty much insectivores, so they don't eat any plant material, so I don't really have to worry about them eating the plants and possibly getting sick from it because they're just not going to do that. Um, but if you have another animal that is more herbivorous, then it's definitely something you need to look more into. And secondly, you're going to want plants that'll do really well inside your terrarium environment. So this one here is a really common plant used in vivariums. This is a ficus benjamina or a weeping fig. So these go really well and as well as a lot of other indoor plants is basically what you want. So you can see with my young boys enclosure here, there's a little fella there hanging out. <laughs> But yeah, I've got the ficus in there again because it grows really well and does well in the low light, sort of humid environment, as well as pothos. Now, pothos is basically one of the easiest plants you can get and grow. It can grow in water. In, it's really forgiving, you know, and uh, it just goes everywhere. And then again, here I have an umbrella plant. It's another very popular one for a lot of different uh, species. A lot of chameleon keepers use that one. And yeah, it's just about finding what works. And it's usually the low light stuff that can take a bit of a beating and is not too sensitive. And even the plants I had in this adult enclosure before are doing really well, are starting to grow out. There's the cutest little pup down there starting to come through on this little bromeliad that sort of got a beating. But um, this palm tree is doing good, as well as the, I have another um, umbrella plant here in the back, just starting to root in. And then this bromeliad too, starting to grow a little pup down here. But unfortunately I'm gonna rip all these out because I want stuff that's a bit taller, a bit more established they can really fill out the enclosure. So the first thing I've got to do is start taking all the old plants and stuff out of the enclosure, but <laughs> here we have a little female looking down here. And here's something I do with my boys just for a bit of enrichment, just to show you guys. Underneath the water bowl here, there's always a big aggregation of uh, earthworms. Now earthworms are one of the boys' favorite natural foods. And uh, it's really good for them too. And because this is a bioactive system, there's a bunch of earthworms in here breeding in the bottom. So every month or so, I usually just move the water bowl away and uncover a bunch of earthworms and feed them off. So we'll see if she wants some. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> As you can see, they love them. They'll just scoff down a bunch of them. How good is that? So yeah, there you go, guys. It's a sort of self-feeding enclosure. That's why they, these guys are just so fun to keep. So easy and it's like a little ecosystem, man. It's awesome. We'll see if the other female wants some. <laughs> so good. So enough fooling around feeding these guys. Let's get to work. Okay. Now, after earthworms again. Come on. Get up there. Come on, get up. <laughs> now I'm thinking I might keep this big palm in here in some way, shape or form, but I don't know if it's going to take up too much space with the other plants, so we'll see how we go. But, um, because yeah, I quite like the palm look in the rainforest. Oh. She's got another earthworm. <laughs> I told you guys they love the earthworm, she's down there hunting. Hey, it's good, that's their natural behavior. Now we've got our old plants out here, which we'll maybe reuse at another time. And then we've got our plants that are going in. So, these plants are like straight from the nursery basically, so they're in pots. And they can't just go in like this. There's a few things you have to do first, so let's get into that. All right, so we've come outside and 
don't mind the, the chickens making noise, but we've got the plants here. And what we're gonna do is empty out all the soil and get it all off the roots and everything. So start by empty it into this bucket. Now the reason we want to get all this soil off is because it has fertilizers and whatnot in it, which could possibly, you know, harm your reptiles or the ecosystem. Say a bug eats something and the reptile eats that bug, might get poisoned or whatever, you know. So it's best to be safe and just clean those roots as best as you can. So you can try and get it off like this, but then I'm going to get the hose on it in a second. So there we have it, the plant and the roots. So there's little bits of like bark and stuff on it, a bit of dirt, but as long as there's none of the, um, you know, little pieces of fertilizer or anything like that, I'm usually pretty happy. Obviously, if you have frogs or something like that, you want to make sure you get every last little bit off because, you know, it can be very harmful for them. But yeah, that's what I do. Let's do the other one. Alright, so there we have it. That one got really blasted off, which is great. But uh, yeah, this should work well. Let's head back inside and see how they look. Alright, so here we have the bare bones enclosure. And we're going to see how these new plants are going to fit in here. So I'm hopefully going to do one on one side, one on the other side. But we'll see how they fit. Now this one's the one I'm a bit worried about because it's really big. Which is good, but it's going to make it hard to sort of find a spot for it. Here's one idea I'm thinking. It's kind of sort of placed right in the middle, but it, the way it fans out, it uh, sort of fills up the space nicely. So I'm thinking I might have it like that. I'll try another way, but yeah, maybe I'll have it like that and have the ficus in the back there. I'm liking it. All right, so I did decide to put that one there and oh, it looks so cool, but even cooler is a little rainforest dragon hiding behind it. Now that's what's important about these plants, really. Makes it look like a nice jungle in there for sure, but these guys are a really cryptic species. They like to hide away and not be seen and not be known by predators, so Having that bit of extra coverage in there is gonna make them feel a lot happier, a lot safer. And <laughs> oh man, it just looks awesome. Now in that back corner, I'm gonna put this ficus, I think. Let's see how it looks. Uh, let's see what sort of orientation. Maybe like that. Let's just take a look. Okay, wow. The plants are in and uh, buried them in. This, it's a simple process, as you can imagine. You just sort of dig a little hole, put the roots in, and um, cover it up, make sure it's all good. How nice and lush does it look now though? These plants really fill out the enclosure and that's what I wanted, some nice established plants that are a lot taller that'll cover up a lot of the area. And uh, now it actually looks like it sort of matches with the baby's enclosure here because that is just plants upon plants. So yeah, we have that one there. And now the parents up here. Wow. I'll just quickly mention a bit about the plants because I don't think I really covered that. This is an umbrella plant, but it's a different species to the one you normally see. This is the Australian version, so I thought that would be great because it comes from probably in their natural habitat, or at least in areas close to their natural habitat, so it's a lot more natural for them. And then the Ficus benjamina is just a plant that's well known to do great in vivariums. And it's got a really good rainforest look, and most rainforests have some form of Ficus in there that has a similar looking leaf anyway, so it really helps with that natural look. and. Man, the plants are going to do great. And plants do more than just make it look good. They, you know, recycle the air in there. They fill up the nutrients that are in the soil. They take all that in and uh, help clean everything and make it part of that ecosystem as well as they also put out a bit of humidity through, uh, through the day, through transpiration of their leaves. Now comes the hard part. These dragons aren't exactly small. They're a decent sized animal. They have very sharp claws and they just love to jump on stuff. So the struggle is going to be are these plants going to survive? Because if the dragons just launch down and jump on them, they might snap them or something. Let's hope they're strong enough to survive that. That's also a good part of why I'm doing it now. We're in winter at the moment, or at least coming into winter. So these dragons slow right down. They usually just sit on the same branch for weeks on end. So I'm hoping during that time, the roots are actually going to establish in the soil. And it's going to get a strong base and the plant's going to really grow in nicely before the dragons can start, you know, trampling them. 
But we'll see what happens. Either way, it looks amazing for now. And just a bit about lighting too. So up here I've got my UVB light. That is a 6% Arcadia. These dragons obviously like low light levels living under the canopy in the rainforest. They can't take a lot of heat or direct sunlight. And then over here we have my LED light. So that's basically the plant growth light. It puts out a light spectrum of 6,500 Kelvin. And between 6,000 and 7,000 I believe is the spectrum in which plants can photosynthesize the best. And so this UVB light as well also is 7,000 Kelvin. So both lights are gonna help with the plant growth, but the plant light especially, because it just puts out way more light. So I thought I'd just mention that these plants aren't just gonna grow by themselves. They need that lighting to help fuel them, as well as good soil. The soil mix in here is a bunch of different things. So it's some uh, coir peat, yuki mulch, sphagnum moss, a lot of all that mixed together, a bit of sand for drainage bit of carbon and uh, it's been here for so long with the bioactivity and the cleanup crew breaking down all the waste and everything it's going to have those natural nutrients in there to sort of fertilize and revitalize the soil as well as the earthworms in there too they're going to make the worm castings which are amazing for plants so uh, hopefully yeah, it helps everything take off really nicely I just love continuing to do more for my animals make their lives better and it's just so much fun and that brings me to uh, TC Houston's Better Care Challenge. Love the challenge. You guys got to go check it out. Go check out TC's video on it and all the entries in that and definitely take part of it. But his thing is basically make a simple change that's permanent and beneficial for the animal and uh, sort of put that up. Well, for me, that's what I'm always doing. I, I'm always trying to do that all the time. Like with the plants here now, that's one thing. This big enclosure I made them, another thing. I upgraded their lighting recently, like I'm always just trying new things and even if I turn it on here, get it cranking, I've uh, made a, <laughs> there it is, a fogging system. So I'm trying out different things, trying to make their lives better and more like their wild counterparts. So I believe we should always be evolving as keepers, trying to do better, learn more, try out different things, and just all to benefit the animals and bring out their natural behaviors and replicate their natural environment. So that's what it's all about for me and it's just so much fun. It's always good to give the new plants a good watering. Can you put them in? Yeah, I really just want to see how it looks. It's full rainforest form. That's another added benefit to all these extra leaves. More surface area for these guys to drink off and keep the humidity high in the enclosure. Now with the new background I recently finished for them, these new amazing plants and this humidifier going, creating all that fog, it is truly a rainforest full of dragons. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learnt something or just enjoyed seeing those Boyd's Forest Dragons. I love their new setup, so happy for this makeover, it looks amazing and they're going to benefit from it so much. So. If you want to see more Australian reptiles, make sure you subscribe. Give the video a like if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.